hear you. <laughs> just want to get your thoughts on going to Seattle. I'm sure you watched them the other night yeah. um, in their Champions League game. Um, just your overall thoughts of facing them um, as the third game of the year here. Yeah, uh, again, I thought they looked good the other night. I thought it was probably ar arguably the best they've played in the season so far. Um, I thought they looked very dangerous in the counterattack. Uh, they were organized defensively. Um, yeah, and, and obviously they have quality players who can who can uh, hurt you, and they've given given chances. But for sure in the counterattack, they look they looked very dangerous. Um, yeah, so for us, I think we just we got to continue with our formula, which is we got to continue to defend together as a group and uh, <clears throat> make sure we choose our moments when we can be uh, when we can be higher on the field and opposing them in their half, and choose when we need to stay together as a group and make it difficult and just close off spaces. Uh, we got to be good in possession, and we've got to continue to to create opportunities. I thought we did a nice job in this last game of getting into good spots, creating opportunities. We probably needed to get a little bit more out of our opportunities than we did, but I thought there were some good aggressive moments uh, for us. So, But again, it's a little bit of uh, going into Seattle against a good team, having a good mentality and, and being able to manage the, the environment and manage the situation for 90 minutes. I think we've also done a great job of doing that and giving ourselves a chance in every game to to win the game, uh, so that's that's a good mindset for us. Now we'd like for more things to be in the back of the net, but that's that's work in progress. What's the status of uh, Victor Vasquez? Uh, Victor's good. He trained today, um, you know. So we'll we'll see how he responds, but in, in general, he was he's doing okay. We'll go with Josh Gesson. Hey, Greg. How are you doing? Hey, Josh. Great. Thanks. Um, wanted to, to follow up a little bit with Damian. I mean, the, the fact that Seattle doesn't have any wins right now in, in league play doesn't really mean anything to you. Is that, is that fair to say? No, it doesn't. I mean, it, it's again, it's an experienced team. I know they've, they're trying to also manage through the amount of games that they have in the early part of the, the season. So they've, they've uh, mixed their group. They've rotated some guys. They've changed. They've played a couple different systems. So it, it's, you know, for sure, look, we've been in this before when you're in Champions League and you're going to have a run and having to manage through this time period is not easy. Uh, they've got to deal with some injuries as well. So, um, but they're always a dangerous team. They know how to win. They're always, you know, at the top uh, every season. So it's, it's a team that we have to obviously respect regardless of what their record is because it won't be like that at the end of the season we, we all know that so and then on uh eric zavaletta as well um now i think with the, with you guys adding him to the roster maybe five or six center back options for you um what type of role do you want him to play in this team and, and does this give you a lot of formational flexibility as well yeah, the role for Eric that we talked about is just to come in and bring his experience, his leadership, his communication. He's a guy that uh, can also can help a young player like Julian. Uh, he provides us some, as you said, some depth in the position, also some flexibility if we wanted to play into, in a three at some point. Just He's done a lot of that, uh, both in the middle and wide. Uh, but he gives us the option. It's also great for our training environment to have another guy who's vocal and has experience and uh, and great for our locker room. So, you know, all, all those there, other than that, will, you know, how he progresses when he's ready, when, uh, when everything looks right, he'll get his opportunities when they come. There's competition in the position, but it definitely gives us some flexibility to, to consider some more options than, than maybe, you know, with his experience and maybe we had more recently. I know when you were talking to Damian a little bit there, you, you were saying, you know, the, focusing on the defensive side of things is, is important and you'll take 34 shutouts i think as you said uh after yeah. the last game that, that would be just fine but is there is there a little bit of frustration from maybe the offensive side of things that you guys are creating the chances but but not finishing right now i think individuals are a little frustrated maybe that they just didn't take some chances that were there for them uh you know we, we've looked at some things just to maybe try to tighten up some of our final connections between the passer and the runners making sure we get runners into the right spaces um maybe to try to improve upon our chances, increase them a little bit more, but some of it's just sharpness, some of it's timing. Uh, but I think the key here is that we're getting those chances. We gotta keep doing that. I think we, um, you know, we'll keep working on the training field and guys will keep working. The frustration is just mostly guys at feeling like they should have taken their chances better than maybe they did in the moment. And 
but that also gives them some motivation every week to, to get out and work on some of the things and try to try to improve. There isn't any complacency in that side of things, that's for sure. So, um, but again, we, you know, I think we've defended well and making sure that we're connected back to front as a group and our front guys are taking as much pride as, as the back guys in getting shutouts. And, and when we do that, it also helps support our attack. We recover balls in better play, places. We give ourselves a better shot on the, on the attacking side when we defend well, which is, you know, key for us for sure. Perfect. Thanks, Greg. Yeah, thank you. We'll go with Andy Diel. So next, Yahoo. Hey, Greg. I just wanted to see uh, a little bit of your assessment on Kevin Cabral. I noticed in the Charlotte game when he switched wings, he had a few different opportunities on the right side. Yeah. Um, is that something you kind of look into going forward, trying to get other people in the fold, or is just that just uh, just experimenting there? No, I I like uh, when our wingers sometimes change sides because they're. You know, obviously with Douglas out there, Kevin, when they're when they are on the sides that they started on, then they're kind of inverted. They want they're coming inside to do a lot of things. When they flip to the other sides, they their aggressiveness to get to the end line, to get behind the back line. Kevin played whipped in some great balls behind the back line on the right side. Sometimes when he gets to that end line on his left side, the crosses aren't as is clean yet, uh, but it's something he's working on. So just it gives fullbacks a different look when they uh, when the wingers want to go inside versus when they're on their natural side and they want to go to the end line, it's just a different defending, you know, uh, expectation on the on the fullbacks that are defending them. So I like when they switch because I think it just gives the opposition a little bit different look from time to time. But it's kind of in the flow of things. It's not something that they are specifically looking to do. But if they end up on opposite sides in a play or whatever, then we're perfectly comfortable with the place change and they're both comfortable uh, in those roles. But those are those are things that I like for this group to do. As we get more uncomfortable with each other, I like for guys to show up in different spots uh, and be able to handle the responsibility in the spot that they're in in that given moment. So um, yeah, but I thought he had some, I thought he had some good service and some good runs and some good actions on the right side. Um, and he had some decent moments on the left side, where again, just the final the final piece needs to be just a little bit, a little tidier. But I, I will also say, if Kevin, he's given us a, a really good shift defensively. That's part of what's helped our our team to be solid. He puts in a really, really sound uh, defensive shift for our group, which is helpful too. We'll go, Robert Jalen. Hey, Greg. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, now that you've completed Eric's signing, are you still looking to add anybody? And if so, kind of uh, in what area of the pitch are you looking to do that? Yeah, we're. I mean, we're continuing to assess. We we still have two open roster spots in our in our twenty, um, so it's there. We still have resources and funds to be able to do that. Uh, just continuing to see how the the group continues to evolve. We have loads of attack, attacking options. I feel like so it's not. Uh, it's not necessarily in, in those spaces that we are we're looking. Uh, we're kind of assessing Jorge Viafana's situation. He's got a he's got an issue that he's carried over from last year with his knee. Just uh, he he might have to have a you know a more in depth look at that, a little scope or something early next week to see where we're at with him. So hopefully he's okay, but uh, that's going to take us a little time. So we're kind of monitoring that situation. Um, I think also, you know, I've talked about it in midfield, there's a possibility along the way to maybe add one more midfielder. We'll, we'll see how, how it shapes up, but the team is doing okay right now and guys are stepping in and doing their jobs. And that gives us some, some flexibility to be patient and see if make sure that, that as our season progresses, that there's not anything that pops up that is, uh, urgent, let's say. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. I'll take one last one from Chris Maldonado. Hey, Coach. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks, Chris. Playing in Seattle, that means back-to-back -back games on turf. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there's a bit of older legs in the squad this year. Um, does this mean you guys will probably kind of take a take a moment to give some play time to the younger players or do you feel like it's maybe not going to be a big issue for some of our older players to be playing on turf this weekend uh and if so will maybe guys like julian see a substantial amount of minutes in seattle yeah i mean i think the good and bad part is we don't love to be on turf in general uh the other bad part is just backing up weeks but I, I will say it's been nice that that we've had a full week guys have had a you know they got a little bit of an extra day of recovery coming off the turf and the travel um everybody's feeling pretty good physically um 
there's no, you know, I don't have any reason to necessarily rotate anyone. Everyone is feeling good and everybody wants to play. We will, we'll assess as we go into the game, as I said, with Victor and with others, we'll assess if it's the right, right moment. The good news is that at the end of this little stretch, we'll have gotten three of our turf games, three of our five turf games out of the way on the season. I think it's five and we'll be on the other side of that. But uh, so far, I think everybody is pretty good. Everybody is, is um, you know, happy with where the team is. I don't think anybody really wants to have a, a day off right now. I think everybody is feeling some momentum on our side and they want to keep they want to keep that going more than they want to hide from the turf a little bit. But we'll, we'll be smart about anything that's popping up. And, you know, if we can be on the right side of the game, we can also make some decisions as the game progresses. But we got to get on the right side before you can do any of that. So. Thanks, Kev. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Hello. Hey, Bondi. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's Thanks for having me. First question with Josh Gethman. Josh, go ahead. Hey, Jonathan. How's it going? Good. Thanks, Josh. How are you? I'm doing good. Thanks. Um, talk about this defense a little bit. You guys, uh, for the first two games, haven't allowed a goal. Um, I believe that the uh, the two shutouts is about half and fifth the number of shutouts possibly to the Galaxy had last year, or right around that number. Um, what what have you noticed? What has been the biggest change? I think defending as a team, um, right from the front players all the way through. Um, we've been a lot more compact, a lot more organised. Um, we've known when to when to step out and press, and when just to keep our shape. And then once we're in that shape, our defending has been a lot better. Um, I feel like the back four as a four just on their own have kind of covered a lot more ground laterally and uh, up and down. So, yeah, I think we've been in a good place. We're not getting carried away um, just yet. We obviously had two tough games, one against the champions and one against, uh, you know, it was really against a crowd of 75,000 people and, and a new team. So, uh, yeah, we've it's a solid start, um, but now it's another big test away at, um, away at Seattle on Saturday for sure. Last season, it certainly felt at times that you were being bombarded with shots as well. Um, there, there seems to have been, at least in two games, and, and like you said, don't get carried away, but at least in two games, it seems like that has, that has slowed down a little bit. Do you feel like, as a goalkeeper, in order to be your best, that you need to sort of minimize the amount of time you have to go uh, 100% on a save? Yeah, it's interesting. Like I, I got asked a lot of questions last year as the goalkeeper and one of the defensive players. You know why? You know why aren't we keeping clean sheets? But then I was a lot more busier and making loads of saves and playing really well. But then we were conceding one or two goals in the game, and um, and now we're keeping clean sheets and I'm having almost nothing to do. So that kind of goes to show how important it is to defend as a team. Um, and then there will, there has been occasions where I have been called on, and then I just have to make sure that I'm there to to do the best I can and and try and preserve that clean sheet. Uh, if I remember correctly, I know you guys are headed up to Seattle. Uh, I think that's your mom's team, or at least was your mom's team. Was she a, a Sounders follower? So is uh, is she going to be rooting against you uh, come this weekend? No, never, never. She won't. But um, yeah, that was her team when she was younger. So she was a, a huge soccer fan um, before she even met my dad, an English guy. Um, and then he introduced her to Chelsea back in England. And but she's always followed them and. Yeah, obviously she's never going to root against me. So, but it's one that we always look forward to because I still have family up there. So, yeah, it'll be good. Very good. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, Josh. We'll go with Danny Calhoun with the LA Daily News. Hey, Jonathan, how you doing? Hi, mate. How are you? Good. Um, just want to get your thoughts on the atmosphere um, last Saturday. Um, just what was it like being on down on the field with you? What about probably seventy three of the seventy five thousand probably streaming against streaming against you there? Yeah, it was incredible. It was um, great energy in the stadium. Looked amazing. Um, the, the the fans were, you know, they were frantic, especially for the first kind of half an hour. And I think we did a really good job of actually kind of slowing that down and killing their their energy and their momentum um, or any momentum they try to build. And um, yeah, it was. It's always difficult the first 10, 15 minutes to kind of settle into the game, and it's you know we can't hear each other. No one can communicate really, and um, makes it very difficult from that point of view. But uh, yeah, it was a great experience for for all of us, um, and an MLS attendance record, which is obviously incredible. Is that the, the largest crowd you've been in front of, or? 
It is by about ten thousand. Yeah, it is, and um, that just goes to show how uh, how much the league is growing. You know, um, that's about the attendance of the the largest um, stadium in the Premier League, Old Trafford, seventy five, seventy six thousand. So, um, yeah, if they can match that, it'd be massively impressive. And you guys are second game, second consecutive game on turf. Um, but Greg said you, you know, you, you've had a whole week to prepare for it. What's your process like? You play on Saturday. How do you sort of come down off, you know, sort of build yourself back up for another game on turf there? Like early part of the week, you do anything different that you would do if the game was on grass at all or what? We actually don't. We actually trained the day before the game in Charlotte um, on, on the turf, which was helpful. I actually like turf. Um, I don't mind it. But I know that the players, I'm not the one that's running, you know, like, Seven, eight, nine, ten k a game, wherever they run. So, I know it takes a toll on the um, on the guys, um, on their bodies. So, yeah, it's something that you probably don't want to train on turf more than what you need to. So they've been training on grass like they're used to all week, and then you just kind of do your best on on turf on the weekend. Um, but yeah, it's something that everyone's kind of dealt with before, or most of the guys have dealt with before. So everyone knows what to expect. We'll go Robert Jalen. Hey, good afternoon, Jonathan. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Um, so, Raheem Edwards uh, just joined in the off season, and uh, after two games, he has two game winning assists, and he's defended quite well. Uh, what's impressed you most about him so far? Oh, a lot of things. Um, he brings us a lot as a team. First of all, he's experienced. Um, he's clearly one of the senior guys. He's very popular in the uh, in the locker room, and then on the field, he's very aggressive, very athletic. Gives us a lot going forward. He's a threat that teams have to worry about. And then his recovery, um, defending is um, is amazing. You know, he gets back in with so much speed, so much power. Just plays his whole game with a lot of aggression, you know, and um, he's got the experience to go with that. I think he's been used to playing a lot at, um, at wing back, I think, at LAFC. So um, it's been interesting, everyone speaking about uh, how we defend as a back four and him kind of learning that role at left back. And I think he's done an amazing job. And the fact that he's got two assists going forward doesn't really surprise me because he, you know, he, he does want to go forward and create chances, score goals. He actually had a chance. Um, or nearly had a chance uh, in the first half against New York City as well, where he was four or five yards out. So he's definitely been an amazing addition to uh, to the squad. Speaking of that back four, um, I noticed that Greg hasn't changed the back four in the past two games. Do you think that's uh, part of the reason that you guys have been consistent? And not only that, can you see that back four going forward, uh, maybe establishing that back four? Yeah, I think we've got, a, generally speaking, a strong defensive unit. You know, we have four centre backs, three senior guys, and um, and one one younger in Jalen, and obviously Eric actually signed today as well. So there's a fifth there, and I think that the back four have done a great job in the first two games of the season. Generally speaking, things happen, suspensions happen, injuries happen. You know, maybe, maybe we you don't keep clean sheets for every single game during the the rest of the season, and. Um, we're going to need everyone so it's really good that we're settled and everyone's um, confident and we're, we're keeping that same back four at the moment um, which is yeah it's good for everyone it's good for the team good for the club so um, you know hopefully we can just keep keep on keeping clean sheets and we won't have to worry about making too many changes thanks Johnson. you have one last one with Chris Maldonado Chris go ahead hey Bobby we hope you're doing well Thank you. It's Brad said it's very early in the season, but going into this game in Seattle, you are one of only five MLS goalkeepers who have remained, who have kept the clean sheet, haven't been scored on once. I want to know how that makes you feel. Does that add uh, pressure? Does that make you more competitive? How exactly does that make you feel, knowing that you're one of only five among some very elite MLS goalkeepers? Uh, I haven't really spent much time thinking about that, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's it's obviously nice. It's nice to be part of that group of teams, but it's only been two games. You know, we've we kept two clean sheets in two games, which is great. But we are literally two games into the season. There's so so much for us to work on, and um, I think 
building, you know, whether we, we keep clean sheets for the next, let's say, eight games, and let's say we keep three, four clean sheets, or we only concede like one goal in a few of the games or something, and we establish ourselves as a strong defensive team, then you, that's when you start to really build pride and you know you're going into the next game and the team that you're playing against know that you're defensively solid and you start to establish that um, that thought in, in both our minds and the opposition's minds. So if we can get to that point and build some, some kind of momentum and establish ourselves as defensively a solid team moving forward throughout the whole season, then uh, we'll definitely be in a good spot to, um, to go far in the playoffs. Thanks, Jonathan. Bonnie, thank you so much for your time. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Hey, Eric, uh, I'd say welcome to LA. I know you've been here for a couple weeks, but uh, but congratulations on the on the contract. Thank you. Um, just just real quick, I, you know, I asked Greg a little bit how he wanted to see you fit into this team, and he said, you know, you're you're an experienced defender, um, who obviously uh, you have some some know how of, of Greg's system. Um, what do you think you bring to uh, to to the team? Yeah, same thing he said. Look, I, this is my 10th year in MLS, so by now I think I know the league pretty well. Um, I, I feel like I'm a proven winner. Fortunately, I've won a championship. And I said to the guys today, the biggest reason why I came here was to to try to taste that again. I see a lot of special things with this group, um, whether that's filling in in games when needed, um, whether that's helping Jalen and some of the younger players develop. Um, I'm here to do as much as I possibly can to help this club grow, to help this um, club return back to where it belongs, which is at the top of the table, and um, to, to nurture things the best way possible that I know how. And so, honestly, the answer is really in every way possible. I'm going to do everything I can to continue to prove myself um, on the field, but also do everything I can and that I normally do off the field um, to help the young players and to help players put, be in the right position to, to win games on the weekend. Obviously, uh, you said you know you won your championships, um, and and seeing this uh, this team here, what what was it that was sort of special about them? What do you see in this group? Well, I, I see a first and foremost talent. Um, there's a lot of special players, um, both young and old here, um, but also just a hungerness um, that I, that reminds me of that 2017 group. Similar in that um, they ended the season last year suffering a bit of heartbreak um, and what that does is it really fuels you um, the following year. I've experienced that before and you can feel it already. I think in these first two games you saw it. They're not just games. They're, they're, we're in a, a revenge tour, if you will, to sort of come back and sort of prove that the beginning of the first half of the season last year wasn't a fluke for them. And so just to be a part of that, that hunger, if you mix hunger with talent, youth, experience, I think it's a really good mix and it's proven to be successful in this league for a long time. And I know it wasn't. A, it didn't seem like it was a quick process, but um, but uh, you know, it, it took a little while for you guys finally to sign a contract. What was that like? What was what was sort of the holdup? Was there decisions being made on your part, on the Galaxy's part? Yeah, it's decisions being made on both parts. Things that happened within the league, uh, with doing the contract, things like that. I mean, things took a little bit longer than we wanted to, but fortunately, I was able to be here, like you said, for a couple of weeks. I've been integrated with the group now. I feel very comfortable with them. They're very comfortable with me. Um, and so right now it's not necessarily feeling like a new player. It's sort of kicking the, um, hitting the ground running right away. And so, um, you know, it is what it is and why it took so long. But here we are. It's only two games into the season and uh, we have a full season ahead of us. So I'm excited about that part. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it. Of course. We'll take the next one from Damian Calhoun with the LA Daily News. Go ahead, Damian. Hey, Eric. How you doing? Good, good. Um... When Toronto, when you left Toronto in December, were there other options either within the league or abroad or anywhere for, for your services? Yeah, of course. I mean, I you know, again, I've been around a while, and so guy clubs around the world, clubs around this league, uh, clubs in other leagues know who I am, and so sure there were other other um, options there for me, but. I knew when, when it was all said and done with Toronto that this was the most ideal option for me for, for a variety of reasons. Um, but first and foremost is what I just said, was I was looking for a club who's ready to win and ready to win now. Um, that fits the timetable for me and also has some good young players who I can help grow and nurture. And this, this group has everything that I was looking for. It's a special group, um, a group who's committed and, and hungry together, and it feels like a family. And so 
Um, obviously, it doesn't hurt to live in this beautiful place of LA. I joked with the guys before that um, I didn't see the sun as much the last seven years, and now I get to wake up and see it every day. So there's so many reasons why this place is special, and there's so many reasons why this is um, my number one choice, and fortunately, I got done. And then you, you, you spoke briefly about the similarities. Um, what do you, can you, is it too early to compare the way Greg sort of built Toronto and the way he's building in this one, or do you see the same sort of steps he's taken here? I think there's similarities and there's differences. Um, the crazy, uh, unique thing about Major League Soccer is that the league changes so drastically um, every few years. And it's a different league than when I, it's drastically different league than when I entered it in 2013. Um, and it's a different league than when he was building it in 26, 2014, 2015, 2016, when those championship teams in 2017. And so, again, like I talked about, talent, hunger, youth, experience, trying to get all of those combinations right, bringing in uh, special players like Kevin Cabral and Douglas Costa and Chicharito and all of these guys. I think the mix of getting your role players right and your DPs right are, are, is a really important thing. And so there's similarities for sure. Um, it's a different team. It's a different club, but one with the same expectations that Greg has, which is winning. And um, that's exactly where I want to be in, some, in a club that, that – it has those hyper aspirations. Thank you. We'll take the question from Andy Dioso with Yahoo Sports. Andy, go ahead. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Great. Eric, most important questions of the day here. I need to know how the pupusas were from the promo video, and if you can please tell everybody why it's so important to ditch the fort. <laughs> So they were fantastic. Um, pupusas are hard to find in, in the United States that are quite, uh, quite as good as El Salvador. I learned that in this past year more than ever. Um, I'd only ever have them from the state of Indiana, and there's some decent ones in the state of Indiana as well, but these were very special. Um, tasted really good, tasted very authentic. Um, so anybody who has a chance to try them uh, during the games uh, should be so lucky. My dad's actually going to come to a game here. Um, next home game and that'll be the first thing he goes is goes to try them so um, they're really good why should you eat them with your hands well it's tradition I, I, the first time we I went to camp um, I actually went to go grab a fork um, to start to eat mine and I got to look like what in the heck are you doing and so from then on no more forks and the video shows exactly why and uh, I think the people really enjoyed that Thank you, Andy. We'll go with Walter Martinez. Walter, go ahead. Hi, Walter Martinez from ConceptoPro.com. You are an experienced player, and you know very well the MLS. What does it mean for you to play in Galaxy? Um, it means a lot. Um, I've obviously been watching this club since the very beginning. Um, I remember watching him when I was a little kid. I posted a picture today and sort of the galaxy of me as a little kid with Kobe and I was even younger watching the galaxy play. This was the cream of the crop of the league when I was a young kid and even when I came in MLS in 2014 when I was in the locker room across the hall from the galaxy with Chivas, they won the championship. Um, so Look, this is a club with aspirations of winning every single year um, and has tons of history and success, and I don't think that's taken taken lightly. Um, so for me, again, it aligns exactly with my vision and my hope, uh, which is to try to win another championship. I feel like the timetable for, for here is now. Um, and so I'm honored, um, I'm humbled, um, and I'm excited to, to be a part of this club with, with tons of history and tons of tradition. Thank you. We'll go with Chris Antonello. Eric, from Los Angeles, I'm sure that you've already noticed just hours after your signing, the announcement that there are plenty of Salvadorian fans here in Los Angeles, plenty of Salvadorian Galaxy fans. I'm sure you felt the love. Uh, first of all, I want to ask you, how does that make you feel? You're a, a national team player for El Salvador. How's it going to make you feel knowing that you're playing in front of these fans? Uh, man, it's hard to put in words, honestly. Um, I've been around this league for a long time. I've had um, a lot of supporters um, and a lot of haters along the way. And so 
Um, their support was one of the main, an another big reason why I wanted to come here. Um, I said there were so many reasons why I felt like this was the perfect time and the perfect place for me to be, um, and they're a big reason as to why. Um, there's so many Salvadorians around here. Um, my family um, came here from El Salvador back in, um, I don't know, 1970 something, um, like 1972 or so. My dad played for UCLA. So I have a ton of roots here um, and there's tons of Salvadorian roots all over the city. So to be able to represent them is an absolute honor for me. Um, and I'm excited to, to see them, to hear them rooting for us, to hear them rooting for me on the field. And um, I couldn't be more um, honored to represent them on the field for the, for the Galaxy. And just lastly, Eric, do you have maybe a direct message for the thousands of Salvadorian fans that are going to watch this press call? Uh, thank you. I appreciate all the support you guys have given me so far. They welcome me with, with open arms from the day that I stepped into the national team. Um, and uh, again, a part of the reason why I'm here is for you guys. I want to represent this city. I want to represent this club in the best way possible for you guys. And um, I will be doing everything I possibly can to represent you in the best way possible. Thanks, Eric. Of course. Eric, thank you so much for your time and welcome to the LA Galaxy. Thank you, guys.